for now let me cross out all this please bear in mind this square was for something else <laughs> it was just for the EQ when we were discussing the low cut I will continue on this image for the time being as we talk about signal flow I will also from time to time bring an image up on screen to give you some indications of what I speak so looking at the signal flow we're going to look at where does the signal go in this mixture disk where does it start out how does it flow through all the points and where does it go and finally end up and how do we influence those various routes and the way it sounds in that situation firstly you have your input or your source this signal goes to the gain the gain will be where you set up a usable level the gain is that which controls the preamp from there it will go out to an insert and as discussed a little earlier an insert typically takes that signal passes it through something on the outside some form of an outboard unit outboard gear processes the signal and sends it back into that same channel uh, it is like plugging a device into the signal flow on your mixer disk you can literally plug something into the disk right there which will influence that channel's signal from the insert it has two different routes uh, I think I'm going to page over source which can be a jack a XLR an RCA uh, where your signal comes into the disk it goes to gain which is the preamp from there it goes to the insert point which could be connected to some outboard unit yeah I'm just gonna say compressor and much of this you'll also be able to see on the diagram on screen from time to time after the insert point I'm just gonna say the insert point is here on the diagram I actually drew a little box after the insert the signal separates into two it doesn't have to it has the option to do that and that will depend on how you set up your desk for your use and your application the signal splits and it goes this way let's say to obviously the auxiliaries and it goes straight on into the EQ into the EQ okay, or equalization now we know EQ consists of various things if you look again on screen on the mixture desk that I'm showing you have uh, oft often they're called treble mid and bass other times you have high and then you have a high mid with a sweepable and a low mid with a sweepable and a bass or a low depending on what they call it and some of them can be influenced in different ways there are multiple buttons involved I'm just going to draw some of them so there may be like three buttons a high a mid and a low or sweepable frequencies whichever way that is the EQ unit and we will be discussing EQ in more detail in a later lesson it splits off here to EQ now let's pause a second the on screen diagram looks a lot better than mine I do realize at this point it splits to or can split to the auxiliary sends now some discs call them auxiliary some discs call them monitors some discs call them buses just out of interest sake the new Behringer X32 has entirely stopped using the term aux and everything is just referred to as buses for now just be aware that the signal can split here to your auxiliaries in other words to the signals that go to monitors or headphones depending on whether it's live or in studio so I'm going to just do that for the moment you can see it on your diagram as well I hope I'm not going too big or too small or whatever now if you look on the diagram you can see it can be pre-EQ which is this signal that's the one I'm referring to pre-EQ uh, that very first one which is pre-EQ this is the signal you have the option as it says the options to set it pre-EQ pre-fader or post-fader now typically if it's pre-fader it's automatically post-EQ but you have that option and depending on how you set up your desk or what capabilities your desk allows will give you the option to take a signal pre-EQ and send it out to your auxiliaries as you can see the auxiliaries on uh, the diagram we'll get back to them again for now know that the signal splits here it goes to that and we'll look at them in a little while it also goes to the EQ now after the EQ the signal is split again 
I can pull it from here, or as on the diagram, I can pull it from the side. As you can see on the diagram, it just comes from the side of the EQ. The signal is essentially split after the EQ, so that you can have a post-EQ, but pre-fader output to your monitors or auxiliaries as well. I'll tell you in a short while why we would want to do this, but for now just follow the signal as it flows. After the EQ, essentially your signal goes into the fader. From the fader, it continues on to your routing and your panning. So it goes down to the panning button. This is the fader, as you know. And this is the pan and the routing buttons. There may be some routing buttons there. There may be a button or two with which you can route. From here, it goes to two places. It splits once again. And as with the EQ, I'm splitting it here. Uh, on the diagram, you'll see it is split over here, coming up from over there. If you use your routing, it'll go to multiple submix groups, depending on how many submix groups your disk has. In this case, I'm just drawing three, as on the diagram. So it splits. You can make it not go here as well, depending on how you use your routing button. You can press the routing for one and two, in which case it'll go to one and two and nowhere else. Or you can select to send it to one and two, as well as to master or to 1 and 2, and 3 and 4, and master. Again, why? We'll get to. How? By pressing that button. And this is how the signal then flows. So it could go there, and from these subgroups, I'm just joining these all here together. You'll see on the diagram they're separate until they go into the, into the master fader. But for here, for now, I'm just taking this up into the master fader, which is there. These are the subgroups. Let me write that in also called sometimes submixes, and here's the master. This other signal goes directly there, has the option of going directly there. To give you an idea of what's happening here. So you have the option at your routing and panning to separate the signals to your subgroups, or to all the subgroups, or to your masters, or to the masters and the subgroups, as you prefer. Signal goes there, Obviously, your subgroups have the option of being sent to the master. Some disks allow direct outs from the subgroups. It's something which I did not indicate on the on-screen diagram, but sometimes subgroups have the option of going directly out. And again, there are various applications for that. In our own church, one of our subgroups goes directly out to the mother's room. So there's a separate mix going to the subgroup, and that mix goes to the mother's room for the mothers and the children with the speakers that are built in there. So, typically from your pan and routing, the signal goes to master, and from master it goes out to the main house amps and then onto the speakers.